Um, pretty happy um, so many people here, and I'm pretty sure a few of the nice friends mentioned about the Chinese Pacific chapter. So I'm uh, Wei from uh, University of Colorado at Boulder. I'm working at the Professor Jingyun's group. Uh, I will um, present our recent progress of the uh, cryogenic sitting cavity at 4 Kelvin and 124 Kelvin. So, um, you know, at Chile we are building the most accurate uh, atomic clock based on strontium atom. And uh, in that system, we need a, a super stable laser to probe a transition from uh, uh, the state 1s0 to v0. And that uh, transition line is 1 millihertz. Now, our system. It's based on a uh, 40 centimeter ERE cavity, which has a, uh, a line with 26 millihertz and stability 1 to the minus 16 from 1 second to 1,000 seconds, and the coherence time 20 seconds. And uh, of course, it's no doubt that we have a um, pretty a uh, lot of uh, great result based on this system. But uh, um, this laser has been limited by uh, its uh, thermal noise floor. So in order to uh, push the uh, frontier of, of the optical clock. And the other related precision measurement, we need to build a more stable laser. <coughs> so let's have a, a brief review about thermal noise. So in term, in the cat work, thermal noise uh, mainly come from the burning motion of the uh, uh, coating and substrate and, and spacer. And that burning noise will introduce some broadband noise, which makes the su surface of mirror to be a uh, flat eight. Uh, in change the capital lens and then impose the uh, frequency noise on the laser which reference to the capital lens. So the Brownian uh, noise can be written as the power square density of the uh, displacement. So that's related to temperature, uh, loss angle, and the Janssen modulus. And the loss angle here is the imaginary part of the complex Janssen modulus. And then this uh, dis displacement will come to frequency uh, instability scaled by the capital lens. So, um, so in that case, so you, in order to reduce the thermal noise, the, the way is very clear. We want to uh, lower loss angle uh, or large Janssen modulus, or the cavity should be the colder, the better. Or we can build a long cavity to scale down this uh, displacement and minimize the thermal noise and use frequency noise. That's the reason why we build a 40 centimeter cavity. But you know, you cannot extend the cavity lens as much as you want because and the cavity is longer, then uh, other noise will rise up, like a vibration noise. So a more effective way is uh, we find the new material which has a intrinsically lower thermal noise flow. So follow this line, we find um, crystalline silicon is the best candidate for the next generation of stable laser, which should have stability on the minus 17 level. So we can see the, the, the in terms of the, uh, the loss angle, the Silicon is an order of magnitude lower than uh, URE or cube silica, especially at low temperature. It's a uh, five or six order of magnitude lower. Uh, and uh, another big feature is the coefficient of thermal expansion of silica. So, so silica has, has to be cooled down. You will only use as quick as you will only use the material to make the, the cavity. That's a couple of points you can try. So either you can try uh, 124 Kelvin. 17 Kelvin at this two point, uh, the CTE is uh, cross zero, and then the first order of this temporary induced noise comes into the total noise budget. Or there's another interest reading is um, lower than 4 Kelvin. In that case, the zero order comes into the noise. But whatever, we have to cool down sending cavity. So, in the uh, very uh, nice collaboration with PDB, uh, we built two sitting cavity with the same design. Each of them is a 21 centimeter uh, long in total shape. And the cavity is cooled down to 124 Kelvin by open cycle natural gas. So if we beat the two cavity directly, we will have the laser line with about 13 millihertz. So each of them is uh, less than 10 millihertz. I think that's pretty news for every people working in the clock. So, and we introduced another uh, stable laser at the 68 and to get a three corner hat comparison. And then we can check the stability of individual laser. So each of sitting cavity keep, uh, gives out 14 by 17 stability. And actually, it's limited by thermal noise flow already. So at Gila, uh, we are building um, another cavity working at 4 Kelvin. 
um, and that design, sorry, uh, that cavity is using a silicon as a spacer and substrate, and using a morphous coating on the substrate, and the cavity is six millimeter long in a long lower direction. And we're using a um, closed cycle helium to cool down the cavity to four Kelvin. And the thermal noise flow is 5 to 17, which is limited by the coating. Um, so there are many challenges in this project. The first one is the temperature stability. So the cold finger have a huge temperature change that will definitely drive the cat lens chain. But it's really hard to find uh, the material or any way to provide uh, enough heat density to suppress this temperature elevation. The second one is the vibration noise. So that's the feature of our entire system. So you can, you can find that there are definitely two clear ways to transfer the, the, the vibration from cross that to, to the cafe. One is the base plate, one is the battle here. And the, it's a closed cycle, so we have no way to get rid of vibration noise. And the third one is a resilient emulation because our cafe is kind of short. So this noise will change the PDH locking point, and actually that's um, will be this situation will be worse because your cat line width is worse. So, um, so to, to have a stable uh, temperature, uh, we need to have a pretty nice model for the heat flow and to calculate all the uh, parameter for all the thermal parameter. So essentially, uh, we have to think about okay, there's some cold finger coming in to, to bring the cooling power, and that one will, we need to build a um, thermal filter to suppress, that's our between the cold finger and the cap plate to suppress temperature elevation and make sure the, tap, the, the temperature change on the cap plate is uh, lower than the thermal noise flow. So that uh, model find, finally give out a real chamber. So the cold finger come in, bring in 2.2 Kelvin, and then if you touch this plate, we name, we name it active plate because this temperature here is active control. And then between active plate to the cavity, we have a, another passive plate and uh, the cavity support structure. These are, these, all these comp components provide a very kind of heavy dump of the, for the temperature fluctuation. And finally, what we measure is uh, on the passive plate, the temperature, the temperature is 6 micro Kelvin fluctuation, and the temperature induced uh, frequency noise 6 to the minus 19 at one second. So, which is a uh, hundred times lower than the thermal noise flow, and also part of the cold, part of power will, from cold finger will recycle and come into the radiation shield to keep it to be 30 k. Um, okay. Another challenge is, um, um, you know, we, it's a closed cycle, so the vibration noise definitely be concerned. So. So, which means we need to design the cavity to be a vibration immune. So in, our, in this cavity, we, which, uh, we need to uh, choose the uh, crystal X along one line direction. Along this direction, the uh, Young's modulus is uh, 180 gigapar, which is uh, three times bigger than URE or fuel silica or any other uh, material we are using for, to build a cavity. And another big feature when we use silicon is uh, on the one-volume plane, um, there, uh, the elasticity is uh, isotropic, but have a, a degree, have a per periodic, de periodic 120 degree, which means uh, we can uh, optimize the vertical mounting uh, cavity by rotate the horizontal uh, triple support structure. And uh, and in our design, we choose one zero minus one as a support uh, as a support direction. So then we rotate the cafe of course in simulation. Um, we can find the vibration sensitivity is a function of the rotation angle. That's a uh, really unique feature for sitting cafe because you know there are in, when you're building cafe, there are many um, error, of course only is error from like a, uh, the material defect or cafe machine or Cavity mounting, but for sitting cavity, we can really uh, optimize the vibration sensitivity um, in experiment. Uh, but that's impossible for any other 
a more personal material like you are you feel silica. Uh, so based on simulation, uh, it will uh, it will 30 degree from uh, uh, two minus one minus one. We have a minimal point is eight to the minus twelve per g, and in the horizontal plane we have one point three to the minus eleven per g. Of course, all these numbers just in simulation only tell me uh, around this range. I have a minimal point, but we need to really figure out where is the real uh, minimum position. So, it, as, as I mentioned before, there are a very strong vibration transfer from from the bellow and the base plate. So, in the experiment, we we need, we need to minimize the coupling from the vibration noise from the cryostat to the chamber uh, by install these two parts on separate plates, and the only connection is a cooling line in the battle. So uh, if we are optimized enough, so we can give out the, some uh, calculation, like uh, we measure vibration noise on the table, and, uh, and the times the vibration sensitivity based on simulation. So that would give out the vibration noise. In the best uh, situation, I mean, which means I install the cavity as I uh, calculate, then this vibration vibration frequency noise will be lower than the server noise flow. So, um, of course, all these just based on simulation, we need to really measure the frequency stability. So, in the experiment, we have a single frequency laser at 1542 nanometer, and we lock to this 60 uh, millimeter cavity. Of course, the cavity already being cooled down to 4K uh, Kelvin. Um, and then we uh, beat with uh, this uh, 40, uh, 1542 nanometer double to 771, and beat our stable laser at 68 by using frequency comp. And what we have right now is uh, the stability is 14 minus uh, 16. And we also investigate uh, other uh, noise source. For example, we measure the residual amplification. Right now, it's a uh, 3 ppm, and then the RAM induced frequency noise. Is on uh, five to minus seventeen. It's not ideal, so we need uh, some more work to optimize it. And here we also um, plot the, the predict vibration and vibration induced noise and the temperature induced noise from trial, which is uh, lower than the thermal noise flow. But we need to uh, using uh, experiment data to confirm where is the real vibration temperature uh, induced noise. And now uh, we just um, uh, figure out why we are limited here because we have a you can imagine our room temperature is 300k and the cavity is only 4 Kelvin so there will be huge gradient uh, in so the cavity can feel and then any room temperature change it will introduce a black body radiation and the cavity feel it we guess of course how we confirm that here is really due to the environment change so which means we need to build a more stable environment for cavity. So, so in summary, uh, for the 60 millimeter cavity, uh, our preliminary result at 4 Kelvin is 14 by 16. Um, for the 21 centimeter uh, cavity at 124 Kelvin, we already limited by thermal noise flow, which is 14 by 17. So for the next step, uh, the first thing we need to do, of course, is optimize uh, the performances of the 60. Uh, 60 millimeter cavity, and in order to reach a thermal noise flow. Another one uh, is because we have really nice progress of the uh, crystal encoding as uh, presented by Gary this morning. We already have a 300K uh, mirror at 1.5. Of course, that's measurement based on room temperature. Now we're trying to put, uh, put everything also in cryogenic temperature to form a full crystal cavity, which has a thermal noise flow of 1.17. 